Hello you two Palo Electric Riders, Lexia is back again, yeah, lightning motorcycles, for every electric motorcycle enthusiast the LS280 is our unicorn since we saw the first video at Barnwell years ago and we all felt in love with this vision lightning is pursuing, hell yeah, how long we waited for this electric motorcycle and finally the lightning strike is officially released. On my channel, I want to share my excitement about electric motorcycles with you honestly. My intention is not to bash any brand for any reason. But I thought many times, should I do this video or not? Because I care really about the image of electric motorcycles. And I want to prevent new customers who want to join our family of electric motorcyclists from a first horrible experience. But I also truly believe Richard Hatfield, the CEO of Lightning, act with good intention and put all his effort into his company. Sorry, this video is not a funny or exciting one. This is real talk. When I saw Brandon's review part 2 on the Lightning Strike, hell no, I couldn't believe what I saw. So I called Brandon and asked him for some explanation. I really have to know what's real. Thank you for taking some time and giving me this uh, this interview because I saw this video you put on the uh, on YouTube about lightning strike part two and mm -hmm. I, when I saw it, it 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 seems unbelievable and this is why this is why I calling you give me some answers on this and yeah let's get okay, started. So I, I want to tell you that. The way you feel about the unbelievability is is not uncommon. So I totally understand why you feel that way. Um, that's actually the reason we brought the bike to the Misfits, uh, because none of the people that were there believed me when I described it. So we actually yeah. brought the bike to them so they could see it with their own eyes. Okay, yeah. That was my first question. Um, what was your purpose uh, to go there to this uh, place where you, with uh, Energica, Zero... Uh, Lifewire and Lightning Strike. Um, oh. Yeah, what? okay. So the what happened with that was uh, it started with just the Lightning Strike. Uh, nobody really believed all of the things that we were we were saying about it with how dangerous it was because everybody was like, no way, there's no way they could have done that. That's impossible. It's unbelievable. Um, so we were going to bring the bike up there, just that one originally. And then, you know, we had our bikes up there uh, and so there's a lightning and there's Energica. And so we thought, well, uh, uh, if we get a zero there, we'll have, you know, some of the big manufacturers there. And then uh, Diego brought a, uh, a live wire up for me to review. And it all happened at the same time. And you're like, whoa, wait a minute. We've got multiple things we can do here. We can send the uh, or we can show the live wire to everybody at the same time as having like a big electric motorcycle gathering where all of the brands that are available today are uh, present. Um, it also worked out uh, kind of interestingly. I didn't realize this, but it ended up with people looking at the strike and then looking at the Energica, looking at the strike and then looking at the Zero, looking at the strike and then looking at the Harley and comparing all of the different build qualities together. So, okay, it was a kind of tech nerd meeting to um, compare. Oh, to, super nerdy. Yeah, yeah, super, super nerdy. Drug, yeah. And to, just to make sure, this uh, lightning strike, it was a street legal version with a number plate and it has insurance. It was officially bought by uh, an actual customer. So it's not kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the United States is interesting um, because you can sell motorcycles without becoming an official homologated manufacturer if you sell it as a custom bike and then you bring the bike to the uh, the DMV and you sign the paperwork and, and they look at it and they, they say, okay, this has blinkers, this has a brake light, this, uh, the throttle makes it go, you're okay, we're gonna register it on the road. Okay, that's just so simple, but it's street legal in that way, yeah, it have no- That's correct, the it, is, it is street legal. Has... Yeah, okay, yeah, just make sure. Before we uh, start with the in-depth questions, tell me more, um, what's your background, career, or a knowledge about uh, electric components and stuff? So when you talk about batteries and stuff, people can uh, yeah. understand what's your background. You're not talking about things okay. you don't know. So mm. <laughs> Yeah, of course. Well, you, sometimes, know. you know, sometimes we all do that. But here's <laughs> yeah. some info. Uh, my last 
um, like real job, I guess you could say, was uh, building a bionic eye. So I built an implant that goes inside of your eyeball that tacks to the retina and it gives vision back to the blind. Uh, you guys can Google it. Um, it's called the Argus 2 retinal implant. Um, and it gives sight back to uh, people who have retinitis pigmentosa, uh, age-related macular degeneration, things like that. Um, so that was my last real job. And uh, after I did that, uh, I was racing motorcycles at the time and everybody wanted the chargers that I was using on my bike. So I decided to make a company built around electric motorcycles where I would do custom race tuning, uh, I would train people how to ride the bikes, and I built uh, what we called superchargers for the motorcycle because it would take a zero motorcycle that took eight hours to charge, and we would drop the charge rate down to one hour for people who wanted to keep their warranty. And then for people who wanted to void their warranty, we have dropped it down to as low as 15 minutes on a zero. But I wrote the algorithm for that to uh, – well, I did have some help from my friends, right? It wasn't all me. Uh, we wrote the algorithm for that to make sure that the batteries were kept safe and healthy. And it took a lot of research to get it. In the end, though, uh, the friends that I was working with creating it submitted the algorithm for testing to uh, some of their battery manufacturer friends. And as it turned out, we got an additional 20x life expectancy in lab tests on the batteries with this algorithm. Now, in the real world, people mistreat things and, like, Nobody ever does things perfectly, especially if they don't understand what they're doing. So in the real world, we, we only showed a, a 2x life expectancy. But that was something that was able to increase the zero battery life expectancy quite a bit. I guess also uh, I took the 2012 zero. I've, I've been buying and riding zero since the very beginning. And now I'm also having uh, Energicas and other bikes too. But uh, I've set land speed records. So I was the first person to break the ton on a production electric motorcycle to go over 100 miles an hour, raced in TTX GP yeah, with electric yeah. motorcycles. I've crashed on Pike's Peak. <laughs> um, I've crashed a lot of motorcycles, a lot. Let's let's jump into the topic more. Um, so tell me, what was the issue with the strike? You, you said before uh, it was about uh, dangerous and safety and stuff. And what's what's your concern um, about the lightning strike in general, or what 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 was pointing at your uh, eyes at first at this um, moment that mm. you saw this motorcycle? So the very first things that stood out when I saw the motorcycle was the fit and finish. Right at at arm's length, it looked really beautiful, but when you got close to it, you could see the carbon fiber was really poorly done. And uh, so that was the first thing that I saw. But, you know, that's not a big deal. I expected it. it's lightning motorcycles. They focus on racing. It's going to be the performance. So then uh, the performance wasn't there. And then we started to inspect the bike closer. Uh, on the second day, uh, Morgan was there and he showed me how the tank lifted up, the carbon fiber tank lifted up. And underneath that, you could see the battery cells themselves. And you could see that the carbon fiber, which is conductive, by the way, yeah. was rubbing on the protective housing of the batteries. And when I say protective housing, I don't mean like something that was put there to protect the batteries. I mean the raw cells have a little plastic frame that they mount in. Actually, um, since I knew we were going to be on the call, I went and got some of my cells that I have hanging here. Oh, hang on. I think I have to turn my filter off. Yeah. I can. Here we go. So uh, this one you can see I've marked it 0V. That's because I have discharged it all the way down to 0 volts. Um, and I, uh, I have also discharged this one, which is paired with it. Um, these are battery cells. Now, a lot of people, when they see the, the, the cells, they might see this and think, oh, it's got metal on it. It's protected. This is a battery cell. It's yeah. not protected. Yeah. Um, the, the plastic piece that I was talking about that was getting rubbed is this part up here on the top. This was the and, part. And, uh, when I open this up. Yeah. Wait, wait a second. This was the part we see on the video um, on top, in this, this plastic parts, right? That's correct. So you'll see this part up here in the part where we lift the tank, where this is being rubbed on oh. by the carbon fiber. Now, if I tilt this a little bit more, you see those copper bars in there? Yeah, yeah. That was the concern you That's talked the about. The power comes out. If you go with your finger inside, you can touch this uh, contacts without any... That's you, you saw this, so that means there are bus bars going in here. You might have to wiggle your finger around in there to actually touch it, but yes, you could easily touch it or you could use a sharper object like a screwdriver or something and reach in there and poke that. Yeah, no big deal and shortcut it immediately, yeah. 
So then in the uh, in the back of the bike near the motor, um, on the third day that we were working with the bike, Morgan pointed out to me that, hey, look at that. You can see the cells there. And the positive lead. Yeah, and the main positive lead coming off of the bike. And this is what you see when you look at that. This is exactly what you see. So everybody who's saying that these are safe or protected doesn't understand. First off, this is thin. It's very, very thin. Yeah, it's just and only a layer, um, plastic layer, right? To, put, uh, to enclose the this one, battery. This one is metal. This is a plastic layer. I'll show you that how this comes off so you can actually see the cell. But this right here, in America, when we were kids, we had this drink called Capri Sun. It's a very thin... <laughs> yeah like plasticky thing mylar. Yeah, yeah you can see the mylar flexing here or or this whatever yeah. this is and it's very very underneath is right under the battery the electronics uh, yeah. electrolytes and chemicals right right so this is just a pouch that contains uh some metal and some uh uh electrolytes and a separator and things like that but this is the battery itself this is the part that's dangerous right yeah, yeah. Um, but take this out here just so you guys can see what's inside of that. Hopefully I don't electrocute myself on camera. <laughs> it's only two people, so I, I won't. But so I've just taken this this plastic housing off, right? Yeah, yeah. There's the plastic that holds it in place. That's not a protector. This is the cell. That's the cell itself. Like a, like any this, pouch cell we know, yeah, yeah. And that's the just yeah, yeah. thin it's, cover. Love them. But this right here is the thing that people are saying was a protection. This is not protection. Nice protection, yeah. So, yeah. Compared to uh, Energica or, or Tesla, what's the difference? How they protect the batteries? Can you explain that? I mean, what's the difference? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, it's very easy to see on Energica. Uh, when you walk up to Energica, they have similar pouches to this in their bike. Um, but they also have a giant aluminum monster of a battery box that both you and I have tested pretty thoroughly, like <laughs> yeah. crashing at 100 miles an hour. I crashed it, yes. And and, yeah. You crash this at over 100 miles an hour, it's not going to be fine. Yeah, you're you guys right. can what happens to a lithium-ion battery when it explodes, and to have, have a look at that, it's, it's rather frightening. Yeah. And this, this is not safe. What I'm doing right now, this is fully discharged. If I bent this much harder than this right while this was actually charged, it could catch on fire right now if I were because, to bend it like I bent that yeah, piece of metal. Collapse inside, yeah. mm -hmm. So imagine yeah. poking it with one of these things. <laughs> or a the street. Or a nail. There, yeah. there are a lot of internet videos on YouTube. You see what's happening when you uh, puncture the cells. Uh, it immediately uh, starts to fire. Yeah, yeah. Um, about the envi environmental factors, um, moisture, water, dust, and heat. How is how it is protected? This uh, enlightening motorcycles. How is the battery pouch cells are protected from environment? Um, so far? in lightning motorcycles or in yeah. other manufacturers? Yeah, just do compare uh, for for Energica, Lifewire, and uh, lightning motorcycles. Uh, how is the difference? Okay. So I'll compare, I'll compare all three major manufacturers, Zero, Energica, and uh, Harley, excuse me, against the Lightning Strike. Yeah. The Lightning Strike has these protections. And the Zero motorcycle has potting around the battery. It has an aluminum housing around the battery. And it then has a further sheet metal housing around those aluminum housings to protect the battery. It's very robust, very strong and very well protected. Um, that makes that battery get hot because it has the potting in it. The oh. Energica has a giant hard shell that protects it and it is fully sealed with gaskets and things like that. That prevents the ingress of uh, ambient salt and moisture in the air. The same thing that the potting does for the Zero battery. The live wire, I can't speak about their specific safeties but what I can say is that battery has a nice, strong battery box around the outside. And the Lightning has none of these things. So having a battery box, having potting, having gaskets to protect from salt and moisture, fog, rain, uh, mud puddles, having some form of protection around that is, is really 
I think, required. Like, yeah. it, it's insane not to. Did, did you ever go with um, Energica? You, you have uh, Energica by yourself. Did you ever go yeah. uh, through massive rain um, or even through a river with this motorcycle? I mean... <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah sure. I mean, like, come on. We're kind of crazy. We do all of that. <laughs> yeah, uh, of course. Of I, course. I, I've been in massive, massive storms with all of the bikes that I have been on. Um, I rode my zero across Europe uh, and up into Denmark, and on the bridges going from Germany to Denmark, uh, it was it was nothing but water going this way. I mean, water got everywhere. Look, yeah. zeros zeros aren't perfect. Sometimes they get little isolation issues in in the wiring harness and stuff like that, but they never get anything really dangerous. It's never nothing's going to turn the bike into a bomb just because you pressure washed the bike. The serious say have some minor or small issues, but uh, it's not dangerous. Uh, you you don't you would you would ride it easy way without any hesitation or, or um, because you're afraid to, to to die on that motorcycle, right? Absolutely, I have no fear yeah. on zeros or energicas. Energica, I've never even seen an issue in the rain. Yeah, and um, with that with that kind of cell uh, lightning motorcycles are done. Mm -hmm. I guess you wouldn't go to, through rain. Yeah, so there's there's a couple reasons for it. The first reason, let's just talk about some design issues before we talk about um, uh, personal fears and dangers. Um, okay, yeah, yeah. The design issue is that the bottom of the motorcycle, you know how a petrol bike has the catch pan for oil? Um, Zero okay. has a pan underneath the bike for, for their charger, and Energica has a pan, much like uh, an oil catch pan, to protect the bottom of the bike and also to prevent the Energica, which does have some liquids, from leaking directly onto the track. But it has, you know, a way to get all of that stuff out. It flows right out the back. Yeah, yeah um, that's it is. Lightnings is a boat. It's sealed in the back and sealed in the front. And it's really like a gravy boat, like what you use at dinner time. Um, we took the bike through some areas that had like uh, little bits of dirt and sand on the road. And also where we live, the sand blows up from the beach. Uh, we took a look inside of the bottom of the bike when we were, you know, looking at the motor because you can see straight down into it and it was full of rocks and pebbles and dirt and stuff, which means that it would also hold water. And oh, this okay. is where the cells holy are. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Holy oh. shit. That's like, like, w w what if it, what if like some metal particulates dropped in there? What if there were metal shavings or something, which like, I think we've all seen yeah. bits of metal on the road before. I mean, that's how we get flat tires, right? What if a screw got in there and then somehow worked its way up into the battery pack? Now, earlier I had said I wasn't afraid of washing or riding my Energica or Zero with a power washer or like at a regular car wash, right? Yeah, 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 normal. Everyone do this. In the Lightning Manual, it actually says you may not wash this motorcycle with a normal car wash. If you okay. wash it at a normal car wash, your warranty will be voided. I okay. mean, it's a I, car wash. That's where you're supposed to wash stuff. I've washed my bikes in car washes before. Of course, sometimes it's dirty and you, you wash the dirt I, uh, and dust down. It's normal, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Not on a lightning. <laughs> okay, okay. That's, that's, and, that's and I do also of... want to say, I was so excited about this bike, Lex. Yeah. I would really like to see this motorcycle and uh, was, was um, very curious about to see it on, on, on the internet on videos like yours or from Sam or, or anybody else. Mm -hmm. And hearing hey, that... Hey, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Sam. <laughs> but hearing that issues confirms again what, 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 I, what I already um, talked about in a further video um, I, I did because... I heard about um, some dealer from South Africa. He was um, run into some shady deals with with, uh, with lightning motorcycle and never got delivered uh, the lightning LS two uh, two hundred eighty. And yeah, he ran into some um, very difficult. Um, he actually league. went to the <laughs> FBI in order to get his money back. <laughs> exactly, exactly. This was really horrible. Yes, this story was horrible. And now hearing that. You know, my concern is if it lightning is, is bad or not, you have you have proven or shown the issues uh, you're concerned about. But I more care about the, 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 the image of electric motorcycles, which uh, yeah. 
we we want to be rep representative and make people jumping into electric motorcycles and being uh, kind of excited about and share our excitement yep. and our love with that and the, cu the, the customer who bought this uh, lightning motorcycle i mean i can feel with him i he must be such angry and uh, disappointed so so here's the thing he paid twenty thousand usd for his bike yeah. um so he, he he's very excited about it he does have a unicorn there's only uh, I think on the street right now, there's there's maybe four of these bikes. So he has something that's very rare right now. Of and uh, so he's got a combination of um, I want this fixed and I want to help Lightning and he wants to see them succeed. Um, plus, he's got 20K invested in this thing, right? If If it goes, if Lightning goes belly up or if they decide they don't like him because he's let us see the bike... Um, he he's not going to get what he paid for because he's already got half the battery that he paid for. He's got almost no no juice in that bike, and it's a death trap. Uh, yeah. So he wants to support them. He's actually been giving them feedback. He's um, he sent in some some pictures of their their warranty uh, to try and help them. Uh, but he is he is a little disappointed. Like he he's the one that pointed out the carbon to us and was like, "Hey, take a look at this. This is something I expect them to fix." Uh, but then when he brought it up to the factory, uh, they seemed to think that stuff was normal. Uh, oh, yeah. What I'm okay. hoping is that by by giving honest reviews and getting more people to chime in, we can help owners like like this guy and the people who have also put down the money for the the strikes, so that they they get what they paid for. That's that's the real goal in the end. And I also I don't want to see the electric motorcycle industry be hurt by a poor bike being released. Um, and this owner is actually a perfect example of that. He says, you know, there's a small chance that if his bike isn't fixed, he's just going to get out of motorcycling altogether. Um, okay. It was kind of funny because he said he'd go buy a Tesla instead. But <laughs> I, I, I mean, that's a cool car, but I'd rather see him in our community on a strike definitely, that's, yeah. that's like up to snuff, you know? Definitely, definitely, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, th I'm thinking, what will uh, Lightning do next? Because they have a lot of bad reviews or people reporting the issues on the World Wide Web. And I really hope they take that serious because this is, we, we all saw this video when the LS280 um, set this record on, on the Bondville. And yep. <laughs> it's, ki it's kind of the unicorn for, for electric motorcycles and, and we, we won, we we can't wait for this motorcycle. And now it's here and it's that kind of disappointment. It's, yeah, it's so I bad. was so excited because, like, I'm sure a, a bunch of the people who are, who are watching this, like, they know I was pretty hard on Lightning about not being production and not delivering the bikes that they promised. Yeah, um, everyone, And if they, yeah. they don't know that, then, like, just straight up, I was rough. I was like, these bikes are not production. You're not delivering bikes. Where are they? No damn well that we're in production. You better stop saying that bullshit. Yeah. There's yeah. bikes over there that are in production. We've been shipping bikes since 2015. And if no. you want to keep running your mouth, I'm going to have you in court, and then you go, you will be bankrupt. Now, what what I said is that your bikes have not been no, production. Our and uh, so now that they're delivering them, I was so excited. I was ready to eat my words and be like, Dude, this bike is sick. I love this thing. They're in production. Everybody can get one. And then I got on it. And by the time I got to the end of the road, I wanted to turn around and come back. Like I had to make myself finish the ride because it was so unimpressive. Uh, but I didn't go into it with that as my motivation. I went into it to love the bike. Like, I yeah. mean, people have heard Morgan talk about how I get on anything with two wheels. And after a day, I love it. Like, it, it could be the crappiest, weakest little thing, and I'm in love with it. Um, yeah, he's got this one story where I, I hopped on the Brammo, and I'm like, you know, the Brammo's not so bad. I like it. This is, you know, like a 10-year-old bike now. Yeah, exactly. And he's like, exactly. Told. shut up. And he, he, he tossed me the keys to the, uh, the Ego. I hopped on it. I went for a ride. <laughs> oh, my gosh, this is a motorcycle. I this love everything. Love. With you. So yeah. to be this disappointed was actually kind of shocking. Um, yeah. It might have been why I found it so disappointing was because I went from like level eleven of excitement down to like negative one. Okay, you, uh, you told me you you have done um, try to to 
to do a, a high speed um, testing. What, what was what was the result? <laughs> I mean, this was horrible. It, I, mean, I guess you can call it high speed testing. It's yeah. the same as a 2012 zero. Um, it I got it going downhill to 91 miles an hour. In fact, I got the 2012 zero downhill before I hacked it to uh, 92 <laughs> miles an hour. So it's actually a mile an hour slower. But yeah. um, it was it went to 80 pretty good. Uh, getting it over 80 was difficult. Um, and it it really did feel like a 2012 zero. It felt like um, it felt like a hub motor. It reminded me a lot of the Evoke motorcycles. Um, uh, it's a Chinese brand that I got to test ride yeah. in Beijing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, um, you know when I rode those bikes, I had the expectation that they were going to be small, like 125, 250 cc bikes. So when I got on it, I was happy with it because that's what I expected. When that's I got on the light, it's supposed to be 180 foot pounds of torque on the Carbon Edition. Our egos have 150 foot pounds of torque. So I was only expecting something as performant as our energetic egos, but I got something as like, you know, an eight year old zero. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope, I hope um, you can do or will do a video about this, uh, more comparison about performance and stuff to confirm. I mean, if you. Yeah, can... so there, there's one thing about that. I really wanted to go in and do. A video like that but when we saw the cells exposed it immediately got taken off of the review track we just we it's, the second day we saw those cells in behind the motor and on top where the carbon fiber was rubbing on it i can't ride that i've got a new baby daughter i've got um we're trying to start a new company with dc fast charging like if i get put back in the hospital it's not good for my family for my friends it's not good for the community and so I I can't ride this bike. Like Morgan just straight up, dude, you know how dangerous this is. You cannot ride this. All of my friends at the Misfits and the Recycle Garage were like, we don't want to be around this. It's so dangerous. So okay. I can't do that video now. But if Lightning fixes the problems mm -hmm. and makes it so it's not so dangerous, so like I'm not worried about it booming into a big <laughs> yeah. fireball. Yeah. I'll, 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 I would gladly research it. Like I'd gladly do that information if I wasn't worried about dying on it. The main purpose I want to do this video, you know, I want to share my channel, want to share the excitement about electric motorcycling and all the stuff. I also want to do real talk videos because I want to prevent people from, from having a, a bad experience with electric motorcycles and I, I see when somebody is excited and you know on on the lightning website you can you can put uh, a ten thousand bucks deposit is half the price and this money is lost you you you're, you're scammed and Oof, um. i want to i know this video will be uh have many thumbs up and many thumbs down and i will oh, first. i will risk i will risk that because i want to provide this service to prevent people to run into some shady scam because I know this video is uh, is kind of risk because I don't want to blame or, or bash some brands. I want to support electric vehicles or uh, Energica Zero and other brands too. But yep. um, I, I can't I can't support Lightning in that way. We have to, we have to criticize um, Richard. We have to be honest. Absolutely, we have to be honest.